OAuth is a protocol for access delegation. Let's assume that there are three services, the authorization service, the client service, and the resource service. The client service wants to access the resource service. Nevertheless, before he needs the authorization to do so. To get it, the client service first asks the authorization service, which is trusted by the resource service, for a token. Finally, using this token, the client can fetch the resource from the resource service. In this communication, we are mainly interested in the messages exchanged between the client and the authorization service. The OAuth protocol defines multiple flows for a client to get a token. The most common used is the authorization code one. Implementing the authorization service, also known as the identity provider, is a lot of work, mainly because we have to deal with all the possible exotic clients. But if we are the client and we want just to get a token, it's pretty simple. Today we see how to do so in Common Lisp. First of all, we have to choose an identity provider. In this example, we will use Authentic, which is self-hostable and we can start it in localhost. If we use the, an online one, like Google, GitHub, Auth0, and so on, it would be basically the same, because the protocol is standard. Let's start by creating a common list project. We move to the common list folder, we start slime, we load quick project, and we create a project called Wauth Intro. Inside, we create a folder Docker Compose and we download the Docker Compose from the Authentics website. We follow the tutorial to set up a password for Postgres and Authentic. And finally, we can start the service. After that all the migration have been applied, we can follow the initial setup flow. Let's follow the initial setup link, not forgetting the last slash. We fill the fields and we go on. Now it's time to create the first application and provider inside uh, Authentic. If we go in the application view, we can use the wizard to create both the application and the provider together. We call the application CLOAuth. We use OAuth2 as provider. We use the default authentication flow and we use the default provider authorization implicit consent. We are given a client ID and a client secret. Finally, we have to set up a redirect URL. This can be any URLs inside our service. That's why I'm using localhost 5000, because this will be where I will start uh, common lisp, and I choose auth callback. We have to remember this for the future. Finally, we can submit. In our common lisp application, we need a couple of dependencies. Ningle, clack and spinret to define the web service. Ironclad and Cubase64 to use auth2 with pixie. We will see what this is. And finally, the Exador to ask for the token. We start from a basic Ningle application with a simple macro to access the session and the basic layout. I leave in the comments a link from where to get this code. In this example, we will use an in-memory session. If you want to store it inside Redis, I will also leave a link in a video in which I discuss how to do that. Let's load the project and we can see that we have a simple page. Now the goal is to ask for a token. We will follow this guide, but converting the JavaScript code to common Lisp. Let's add a link to do the login. Now we have to actually implement the OAuth flow. We find all the required details for OAuth inside the provider. We can see the client ID inside edit we can find the client secret and in the bottom all the URLs. We set up all the required values inside a couple of dynamic variables. The first route we need is login. This route will do a redirect of the user to the identity provider. 
it's important to note that this is not a direct connection between the our backend and the authorization service the browser of the user will be redirected and the user can do the login directly with the identity provider afterwards it will be redirected back to our service this is why we need to set up the redirect url the redirect url will be where the identity provider will send back the user after the authentication the authorized uri has a lot of parameters but the basic idea is that we are just doing a redirect to the authorized uri and we have set up the authorized uri as a variable at the beginning this link was given to us by the identity provider the details we have to pass are the first is the client id which is provided directly by the identity provider when we set up a new client the redirect url is chosen by us we have set up oauth callback we will use this afterwards the state is generated at the beginning and this is just some random values we are storing it inside the session and we use the base64 encoding or more specifically a variation of the base64 encoding called base64 url which is the same thing as the encoding base64 but it replaces some character that don't work well inside a url in particular the plus which could be interpreted as a space inside the parameter of a url becomes a minus while the slash which is obviously reused will become an underscore it's important to remember that substitute will replace the second argument with the first moreover we remove all the padding from the end we need two more values which are generated in a similar fashion the nonce which is again just some random values and again we store it inside the session we will use the state and the nonce to be sure that the requests are really authentic it will be just a string equal comparison the challenge is slightly more complicated again we generate some random data store inside the session a code nevertheless to the authorization server we just send an hash of it we will send the code in a later step this way the authorization we will be able to solve the challenge you will do also the hash and verify that it is the same that we sent at the beginning with all of those steps we should be able to verify that the user can log in and the, ser the authorization server will redirect to the re redirect uri we can see that we started from localhost 5000 then we were redirected to localhost 9000 there were a couple of redirect internal to the identity provider service in the end we got redirected back to the OAuth callback path inside localhost 5000 now we can complete the flow by asking for a token with a direct connection from our backend to the authentication server using this code the state we can see inside the request is the same we have generated randomly during the first step we will have just to compare this value to the one that we have inside the session we define the OAuth callback path this is the redirect url that we have set at the beginning during the registration of the client inside authentic we read the code and state from the url and we retrieve the state the code verify and the nonce inside the session if the state inside the session is different from the one that we are provided in the redirect the authentication fails otherwise we can ask the identity provider through the token uri that we read in the configuration of the client at the beginning inside authentic and we get the token again there is a very long list of uh, parameters but they are the usual one we have the client id and the client secret that we got from authentic 
the code was provided in the redirect, the code verifier we stored inside the session and the, the um, authentic knows that you will have to do an hash. The grant type is authorization code. This is the flow that we are using for OAuth. And finally, we always provide a redirect URL. If everything is successful, we will get back our token. To test it, we try again the login. The login was successful, but we have to put the result inside the list. Let's try the login again. And we can see that we got an access token. Next time, we will load the access token and finally verify the nonce. For today, this is all. Let me know in the comments if you like the video, leave a like and subscribe.